I've received a number of great questions asking me, how do I think about the new computer science curriculum moving forward from fall of 2020 and beyond? So what I would like to do in this video is walk through the sequence of courses that we would encourage everyone to follow and relate them to one another so that you kind of have an expectation of where we're going in the path that you'll be taking as you move deeper into the field of computer science. And I want to relate these courses along three axes. Right? So this first axis is going to be the applications axis. Right? And what I mean by applications is how do we actually take the products of our field and solve real problems for real people? How do we build tools that have real world impact and bring our discipline closer to actual uses out in the real world? In this next dimension, I want to talk about theoretical courses. And the theory of computer science is what sets our entire field on a sound basis that gives us uh, the confidence that when we can prove certain uh, traits about the things that we're building, uh, we know that they're going to have qualities that we can depend upon. And so our field began as theory and there is still uh, very much so active research and, and development going on on theoretical underpinnings in computer science. Uh, but this is a direction that, that will teach you what are the mathematical bases for our field. And then in, in the third direction, we're talking about uh, the systems that sit beneath the work that we do in applications, right? And so these systems might be software systems, such as operating systems, uh, or database systems, but also uh, the hardware that sits beneath those software systems, right? And so hardware, we're thinking about things like the central processing unit and memory, and how do these things, how are they organized, so on and so forth, right? So these are the three axes. I kind of want to uh, try and describe where courses fit in along each of them, right? In your first semester of computer science, right? We tend to expect that you come in and begin with an introductory programming course, right? So at UNC, that course will be Comp 110. And so 110 would be intro to programming, right? And if you took an introductory programming class somewhere else, such as AP or uh, at another college or even another course at UNC, such as 116, that gives you the foundations, you can earn credit for 110 in the future by examination, right? So either you start with 110 or you pass through 110 by examination, but really this is about intro to programming and this is what uh, sort of starts your journey into computer science. The intro to programming course gives you a sense of abstractions, uh, some recursion, how to think computationally uh, that sort of allows us to establish a framework that is friendly from the perspective of working in a modern computer programming language is much more friendly than starting uh, down in say assembly language or something like that. Uh, and we can build upon this knowledge to have some familiarity with how computers will interpret the things that we ask them to do in, in the form of code uh, and build on top of that. So the other thing we expect in your very first semester or beforehand is Calculus 1. And the reason for this is Calculus 1 gives you uh, some practice thinking formally about functions and higher order functions such as derivatives, which is uh, a more advanced way of considering mathematical functions. Uh, and there are some other conceptual frameworks such as uh, summations and uh, and and uh, antiderivatives or integrals that in future calc classes can also help uh, prepare you for some ideas that you'll see again in computer science and applications of them, right? So after your first semester from 110, you move in two directions, right? So you're going to uh, move sort of up and out in the application and I'm going to claim the theoretical space to 210, which is data structures. And what data structures is going to teach you uh, and what you will come out of data structures having learned is how do we model larger problems in programs 
such that we can uh, effectively work with much bigger data sets or uh, much bigger mo modeling problems than we otherwise would have. How do we think about in 110, you might you will have learned a, a simple data structure such as a linked list. In 210, you'll learn more advanced data structures like trees and uh, hash maps and graphs and so on. And the reason why I'm moving this somewhat in the theoretical direction is because you're going to also learn about big O notation and asymptotic, uh, asymptotic complexity. Uh, and you're going to learn about the space-time relationship between the data structures you choose and the algorithms you choose to uh, complement them and how they relate to one another. And so there is some uh, theoretical basis to what you're doing in, in uh, 210 as well. So this is going to be your second semester and you would have 210 as well as uh, a course in the theoretical direction that is discrete structures 283. And this course can also be uh, satisfied with math 381, which is discrete math, uh, oops, discrete structures. Uh, and if you are choosing between the two, if you know you're going to be a computer scientist and you're not gonna do a math minor or major, we are going to encourage you to take 283 because 283 is going to teach you discrete structures in the context of computer science and you will uh, spend more of your time thinking about the applications of discrete math in our field directly. So what do you learn in 283? Well, you learn uh, many formal foundational concepts that you need to understand in order to think about computational from a theoretical per computation from a theoretical perspective, such as uh, the ideas of sets and uh, lists and relations, combinations, permutations, the notation, uh, for thinking about this, thinking about proving uh, statements, so on and so forth. Right? So discrete is really about building up a toolbox that uh, of, of primitives that we can use not only in deeper theoretical courses, but also you'll see uh, throughout your other courses in computer science, even such as in uh, 210 data structures. Right? So that's your second semester of computer science. And in your third semester, we are saying, okay, well, now that you've got uh, a, a, a foundational understanding of data structures, uh, we wanna start to bring you also over in the systems direction, right? And so in this direction, we're going to see uh, systems foundations and this is comp 211, right? And so this is a new course that takes some of the material from comp 411 currently and puts it into a new course, Comp 211. So what are you gonna do in, in 211? Well, in 211, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time getting a, a firm understanding of the tools we use in doing software engineering, such as working in a command line shell, thinking about compilers, thinking about build systems, working with version control, uh, some of the foundational tools that will help make you a more productive uh, software engineer in every other course. Uh, we're gonna spend some time there. But the real conceptual material that we'll be focused on in Comp 211 are things like, okay, how we've used integers and floating point values in uh, say Java in data structures or any other language. How, do, how does the computer actually model those numbers and represent them in, uh, in zeros and ones effectively? Or how do we think about the, uh, the way that these numbers are represented in our computer systems? Because ultimately we know that the computer itself, which is made up of electrical circuits, is going to need to be able to think in terms of the presence or absence of electrons. And so we're going to need to think about how do we actually take just a simple concept, which is either on or off and start to expand it to the idea of being able to represent numbers or represent text or represent instructions in our programs. We're also gonna spend some time thinking about the memory, uh, thinking about the process model. When we run programs, they form processes and there are certain properties uh, and things you should know about what a process is in order to understand how it fits into a system such as an operating system uh, and how memory is laid out in a process and thinking about things at, a, at the memory address level 
uh, that we can do in say the C programming language. So we'll be using a systems programming language that gives us direct access to memory here, right? But really what we're trying to do is offload some of the material that was in 4.11 while adding on some additional concepts that were previously missing from our curriculum, right? The other direction you'll move in your uh, third semester, so 2.11, and you'll move up in the application space towards Comp 301, which is Foundations of Programming, and this is formally Comp 401. So if you've taken Comp 401 or you know anything about it, uh, this would be the course that conveys many of the same concepts that you learned there. Uh, and the idea is now it's going to be able to go a little bit further and a little bit faster than it previously did because we can assume prior knowledge of uh, data structures and how we start to build larger scale uh, models in our programs, right? But this is about how do we how do we get even closer to the user? So for example, in 401, often you'll make a graphical user interface application that can be used directly by uh, someone on a machine. Uh, and how do we start to structure programs using uh, certain patterns or uh, conceptual frameworks for organizing larger and larger scale programs to take on bigger, more challenging uh, applications, right? And so that's the 301 Foundations of Programming class. In your fourth semester, you'll continue moving deeper into the systems and hardware direction with Comp 311, which is computer organization. And this is the course that was previously Comp 411, right? And so in this course, you'll learn about what a central processing unit is, the components it's made up of, how to think about instructions at the assembly level, how to think about things like caching, and this brings your understanding of computer systems down into the actual hardware itself uh, so that you know at this point how a program that is written in, say, C is actually able to be run on a uh, computer chip, right? So I should pause here for a moment to say that if you are pursuing a BA, these would all be required courses, uh, and then you would go on to fill breadth courses from there. Uh, and one of the additional breadth courses is going to be the one that I talk about next for 55. Uh, if you're a BS, there's an additional course that's required, and we encourage you to take it uh, early on because it's foundational. And for 55 is the uh, Models of Languages and Computation course. And this course uh, teaches you about the theoretical underpinnings of computer science. And so we go back to talking about uh, mathematical models for machines and starting from very simple machines, such as a finite state machine. How do we model something like that using uh, mathematical concepts and terminology and formalisms improve certain characteristics of those machines and then build up towards more complex machines, such as a Turing machine and think about some of the additional gains in uh, abilities that we get out of different models for machines. And really that work sits beneath everything else that we do, even at the hardware level. So this is a very foundational course, right? If you are a miner moving forward, you'll have these four required courses and 311 becomes optional. Uh, it can be considered one of your additional uh, breadth courses for the minor. If you were a BS, all of these courses are uh, are required. And there's one other course that I should mention because it's also a very important course. I'm going to draw it in a direction that is uh, somewhere closer to applications, which is 550 algorithms and analysis. All right, and so in this algorithms course, We'll learn uh, more advanced algorithms as well as how to analyze uh, and properly think through the time space complexities. So we take some of what you learned in 210 and really go much deeper into it uh, and, and think about how we can prove certain properties of algorithms and expect that they behave in certain ways and with certain characteristics in our uses of, in our uses of them. So these are the required courses in our program. And these sort of 
form the, the foundational basis of your uh, understanding of computer science, right? So what we're saying is we take these courses and these form the kernel or the core of your knowledge. And then the additional courses that you'll take further in the major expand upon this and add additional layers to it, right? So for example, in the applications direction, you can imagine a course like Comp 426, Modern Web Development, uh, that's bringing you closer towards a specific application. Uh, same with mobile application development. If we think in the systems and hardware direction, you can imagine courses like operating systems or database systems or compilers fitting in on, on this space. Compilers, you could imagine actually maybe somewhere uh, further out in, in, in the direction that's directly facing to you because it involves some, uh, some serious theoretical uh, concepts as well. You can imagine uh, that Montech teaches a course where you're actually building computer chips, and that's very much down in the hardware direction, well outside uh, what you did in, in, in 311. Uh, in the theoretical and applications direction, somewhere in this space, you can imagine some additional courses like our natural language processing course or a machine learning course and an AI course. Uh, those have some theoretical and, and, and mathematical bases. Uh, 2D graphics, you can imagine somewhere in the system side of things, but, but also closer to applications. Uh, and so we're trying to, in the intro sequence, really form a, uh, a robust understanding of the foundations that sit in the middle and are, are what we believe to be the most important things for you to know in order to start to add on the uh, peripheral more uh, specialized areas of understanding in the field. And we think this basis will give you a, a solid grounding to move forward and succeed in the field of computer science, whether you go into a industry direction or an academic direction. Uh, we're trying to really set you up for success any direction you go.